if there's one or top three competencies to drive innovation or to drive your organization in the disruptive economy, uh, what is it? And the common thing is that one is to have a vision, clear clarity in terms of where you're going, because people must be very clear what you're trying to achieve. Interestingly, second, for, for the last five years, second competency consistently came out is critical thinking. Not creative thinking, not strategic thinking, but critical thinking, which is defined as the ability to leverage on the cognitive readiness or the metacognition, which consists of creative, strategic thinking, problem solving, decision making skills, all four. So I'd like to ask you, do you think critical thinking based on the definition, creative, strategic, problem solving, decision making, to help us to analyse information, to help us make decisions in the disruptive workplace, is it important? Your view, please. Thank you. The answer is definitely a yes. No, uh, critical thinking is, uh, is, is important. It's all the more important right now if you take into consideration AI because, that's why, like was, I, I was mentioned before, we, a lot of, uh, if you re rely too much on AI to, uh, for your judgment, there's a very high risk that you come to the wrong conclusion because the, the insights is depending on the data that you feed in. And with uh, a lot of our information sources are now very curated, consciously or not or, or unconsciously by us. But I mean, the question I pose back to Prof is now we have seen many, many boards here, uh, also in the regions and probably internationally. If you look at the makeup of the boards, um, do you see uniformity or do you see diversity? Uh, probably that will answer your question. <laughs> This is the problem, you know, they come in from the GLC background. Like same, same thing in Singapore, a lot of GLC come from uh, MINDEF, come from SAF, come from Tamase. So the, this is very unfortunate. So they have similar way of thinking, analyzing information and so forth. So the answer question is, uh, that is a problem. We need more women in boards. And I am a strong uh, supporter, and whenever I travel in the world, when I talk doing keynote, and I think women, we need more women uh, on board. The reason is simply because in my job, in over the last five, five different organizations, CEO, I found women give a very different perspective, more, uh, they're more reflective, uh, they're very high emotional social. I'm not trying to, to generalize, but I'm talking about relative. So I think you I think you need more diversity, you need more younger generation, we need more Gen Y which we very, very future leaders. They come be very fresh. And the problem is many of these senior leaders on the board, or they are not prepared to accept that. One concept that I advocate called reverse mentoring. So in Malaysia, for example, some of the GLC, I'm asking the board member to pick a reverse mentor of a Gen Y to mm. learn about disruption, learn about AI, learn about Industry 4.0. Pick someone in your organization, the young and upcoming uh, manager of Gen Y, to mentor you. Listen very carefully. Mentor, not coach. They don't like the word to be coach. They like to be mentor. Worse is, oh, mentor must be some senior. No. Because this guy knows better, they read better, they understand. So are you prepared to accept and open up?